And just a quick disclaimer before we get started, guys. I am not an expert by any means. I am an average Joe, or Jill, I guess. Um, learning just as you are about homestead life, please vary your sources, especially with something as important as identifying plants, which plants you can feed to your animals and which plants you can't. I hope that you can add my little tiny bit of knowledge to your arsenal and I hope it helps you get to know native Virginia plants if you live in this area. Um, but please vary your sources. This is a disclaimer. I am not 100% sure that I could identify these plants um, for someone else. For myself, I feel completely safe giving these to my animals and eating them for myself but please do not use me as your only source of information. Thank you guys so much. I still hope this video gives you a good idea of how to identify plants and maybe gets you a little bit excited about what might be out there in your backyard already that you don't even have to grow that you and your animals can benefit from. All right, let's get on with the video. Good morning and welcome back to Naked Rabbit Homestead. I am here in my medicinal weed garden that I did not plant. All of these plants are native to Virginia and I absolutely love this part of the garden and this time of year when the weeds grow up and they get to about three to four feet tall. They start to flower and it is just so easy to reach down and pull a few of them per day to feed to my goats and my angora rabbits. I like to get a good five gallon bucket going for the rabbits. And I wanted to introduce you to a few of the plants that we feed to them. So I'm still learning all of their names. I'll be upfront about that, but I am getting to know what, who they are and what they can offer to us and our animals. So this one here is Mallow. Um, you may see her less mature, small leaves close to the ground in clumps. I'm gonna see if I can find an example still growing. I was pretty excited to find it and I wiped out a big patch today. Um, most of these have already gone to seed, so I'm not too worried about affecting them coming back next year. Here she is, and there's these little flowers on her, just such a pleasant to look at plant. Reminds me of lily pads a lot. Um, then of course we have our different varieties of dandelion leaves. These are amazing for humans as well as animals. So I let some of them grow up really tall in this section of the garden. You can hear the birds are just so gorgeous this time of year. Now this one I don't know by name, but I know my Nubian dairy goats go crazy for it. And I will learn that one soon. Here we have an example of a native wild lettuce. And even though it looks prickly, it is pretty soft. Um, so I really enjoy feeding this to my rabbits. I know the benefits of wild lettuce. I make tea for my own Lyme disease and it really helps with my pain level. Um, and they, they seem to really enjoy it too, especially during pregnancy and right before they give birth, I'll make sure that they get some of this particular plant here. Um, next we have here, I just learned about this one. This is lamb's quarter that has gone to seed. It has kind of a silvery sheen to the leaves, very nutritious and great for your rabbits. We also have some different varieties of plantain. Um, maybe you guys know what that one looks like already. That one is pretty common in this area, but I'll still see if I can find it. A lot of this is in the mode section of the yard. And I try to keep it, yeah. I try to keep 
the weeds growing in my yard because they are so much more nutritious than just grass. So that is plantain and with the clover, that is also something really great for our animals. Um, another one that I really like, it's back here. And I don't know the name of it, but it kind of tastes like lemon a little bit. And I've been eating this since I was little. I like to give it to the rabbits sparingly because I also like to eat this, but um, I feel really fortunate to have such a large patch of it here. Next, I want to show you um, this one right here. Now, when I looked up this plant, the leaves didn't look exactly like this, but the taste gave it away. And that kind of brings up local adaptation. You might find that some of these plants look different in your location. So it's important to be careful when you're identifying plants to feed to yourself and your animals, but they do tend to adapt to the region that they live in and they might look a little bit different where you're at. So this right here is garlic mustard. It has kind of a savory garlicky taste. Sophia always wants to be in these videos. <laughs> um, yes, it's not about you, Sophia. <laughs> Can you believe this cat was abandoned in someone's barn? She's so sweet. But this garlic mustard is really nice. I'm not going to take up your whole day, but I want to show you one more amazing plant because we need to keep our rabbit's teeth trimmed down too. And some people will give them wood blocks, but those are not only expensive to keep up with buying, but you don't know what the wood has been treated with or where it came from. Um, some people will order in fruit tree branches as well, but we have no need of that here because of this amazing patch of autumn olive. Now autumn olive is pretty distinct. It has this silvery sheen to the bottom of its leaves and this almost reddish um, bark, which makes it really amazing. This time of year in early autumn, you'll also start to see the autumn olive berries or the silver berry. And here is an example of that right there. These are also considered a superfood for humans. See that little spider chilling out? He's like, this is mine, don't take that. <laughs> But I really enjoy eating these berries. You can make chutneys, ketchup, um, steak sauces, and jams and jellies out of this. It is absolutely amazing. But I will take branches off of this tree um, to give to my rabbits as well. Actually, going down our lane, um, you'll see there are many autumn olive trees. They are invasive and they do quite well here. So. I don't feel bad hacking at them a little bit for the sake of my rabbits and they really enjoy it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more sustainable living tips and tricks and um, tips and tricks on how to keep your Angora rabbits healthy and happy. All right, take care guys. Bye. Do you love your autumn olive?